Hello! In this tutorial I will show you how to make a square glossy button in GIMP 2.8. The button is going to look like this. There are different ways to make such a button and I want to show you one of the methods I use. My button has texture in it. If you do not have carbon fiber pattern you can skip that step or use another texture pattern. Alright, let's begin. Make a new file. Go to File, New, 500 by 500 pixels. I have my file already open, so I'm pressing Cancel. First we need to create two guides that will help us with the lining. Go to Image, Guides, New Guides by Percent. Select Vertical, Position 50. Press OK. Repeat the step, but this time change direction to Horizontal. Create a new transparent layer. Take Rectangle Select tool and then Tool Options set Rounded Corners to 48 pixels, then click Expand from Center and then for Fix choose Aspect Ratio. Now pull a square from the center of the image. Go to Tool Options and for the size set 300 pixels and press Enter on your keyboard. In this tutorial I'm going to convert all my selection to paths. So go to Paths and convert the selection to Path. Go to Select, Select None. Load selection from the path. Set your foreground color to red, number D7 and four zeros. Next, take bucket tool and fill the selection. Go to select, select none. Create a new transparent layer. Set your color to very dark gray, number 47, 47, 47. Go to Paths and click Stroke Path. Set line width to 3 pixels, the rest leave at default. Now you should have a thin line around your red rectangle. Load the selection from the path. Go to Select, Grow, Enter 6 pixels. Convert this selection to a new path. Go to Select, Select None. Load selection from the path. Set your foreground color to 727272. Create a new transparent layer. Move this layer down so that it is below the layer of red square using the green arrow. Then take bucket tool and fill the selection. Go to Select, Grow, and 1 pixel. Set your foreground color to white. Take Blend tool, set shape to bilinear, gradient foreground to transparent. Also set the mode to Overlay. Pull the gradient from the middle of the image down to the right corner. Repeat this three times. Go to Select, Select None. Select Background. 
Create a new transparent layer. Go to Paths tab. Load selection from the path. Go to Select, Grow, Enter 10 pixels. Go to Paths and convert your selection to Path. Go to Select, Select None. Load the selection from the path we just created. Set your foreground color to C6, C6, C6. Take back a tool and fill your selection. Go to Select, Grow, Enter 1 pixel. Set your foreground color to white. Take Blend tool, we are going to use previous settings and then pull the gradient from the middle of the image to the bottom right corner. Repeat it twice. And now pull the gradient once more from the middle of the image to the right side. Next, go to Select, Grow, Enter 12 pixels. Select Background. Create a new transparent layer. Go to Paths tab and make Path from the selection. Go to Select, Select None. Load selection from the path. Set your foreground color to 41, 41, 41. Take back a tool and fill your selection. Set your foreground color to white. Take Blend tool, we are going to use previous options. Pull the gradient from the middle of the image to the top right corner and repeat it four times. Now pull the gradient twice as you see on the screen. That was done on the right and now do the same on the left. And the last time pull the gradient from the middle of the image to the right and we are done here. Select background, create a new transparent layer, go to select, select none. Next go to paths, but before that set your foreground color to C6, C6, C6. Set line width to 3 pixels and press stroke. Select layer with red rectangle. Go to Paths and select the very first path we created. Load selection from the path. Create a new transparent layer. Take Bucket tool, go to Tool Options and select Pattern Fill. There select Carbon Fiber Pattern. Fill your selection with pattern. Create a new transparent layer. Set your foreground color to white. Your background color should be black. Take Blend tool, 
set gradient foreground to background, shape to linear. And don't forget to change the mode to normal. Pull the gradient from the top to the bottom of the selection. Select the layer with pattern and set this to grain match. Then select the layer with gradient and set it to overlay. Create a new transparent layer. Go to select, select none. Take rectangle select tool and change rounded corners radius to 42. Then make selection the way you see on the screen, pulling it from the middle of the image and so that it's a bit less than our layer with red color. Take blend tool, go to tool options and change gradient to foreground to transparent. Pull the gradient from the top to the bottom of the selection. Create a new transparent layer and pull another gradient just one centimeter down. Go to Select, select None. Select the layer with the large white gradient and set it to Overlay. Duplicate this layer. Select the layer with small gradient and better keep it to mode to normal, just reduce the opacity to about 85%. Yeah, I think this looks alright. Go to Paths and select the very first path we created. Load selection from the path. Select the layer with black and white gradient. Create a new transparent layer. Set your foreground color to black. Take Blend tool and pull 1cm up from the bottom of your selection. Go to Select, select None. Set this layer to Grain Merge and then reduce the opacity to about um, 65%. Select layer with red rectangle. Create a new transparent layer. Go to Paths, make sure the very first path is selected, then click on Stroke Path and enter 10 pixels for the width. Your foreground should be black. Now we need to make this layer blurry, so go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Here you should enter 17 pixels. Set the slide to Overlay. Uh, on the second foot, better to set it to Grain Merge. Go to Paths, load the selection, then go to Select Invert. Then click the Delete button on your keyboard. Go to Select, Select None. Reduce the opacity of this layer to about 80%. Go to the very top layer and select it. Create a new transparent layer. Take Ellipse Select tool. and make a selection as you see on the screen. Now in Tool Options set the size to 130. Go to Paths and create path from the selection. Go to Select, select None. 
Make sure your foreground color set to white. Go to Stroke Path. Enter 14 pixels for line width. Take Rectangle Select tool in Tool Options and check rounded corners. Then make a small square as you see on the screen. And then press Delete on your keyboard. Get rid of the selection by clicking anywhere on the empty canvas. Take Move tool, click on the image to activate it, and then move the layer with the circle a bit down. Create a new transparent layer. Take Path tool and set two points as you see on the screen. Go to Paths, click Stroke Path, for Line Width select 17 pixels and then for Line Style, Cup Style, you need to choose second icon. Right click on this layer, Merge Down. Right click on the layer with the symbol, Alpha to Selection. Create a new transparent layer. Move it below the layer with symbol. Set your foreground to black. Go to Select, Grow, Enter 2 pixels. Take Bucket tool. Make sure that you switch back to foreground color fill and then fill your selection. Go to Select, Select None. Take Move tool. Click on the image to activate it and using arrows on your keyboard, move this layer 2 pixels down. Select layer with white symbol, duplicate it and call it blah. Move this layer below the layer with black symbol. Go to filters, blah, Gaussian blah. Enter 15 pixels. Duplicate this layer. That's it, our button is ready. Now I will zoom out to show you the effect from the far away. Hope you like the button we created together. If you want to save your button with transparent background, switch off the background layer, then go to Image Merge visible layers. Delete the background layer. Go to File, Export and save your file with PNG format. If you want to save your button with the background, don't remove the background, just flatten the image and save it in JPEG format. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe!